Hey there, how you doing? Hope you and your loved ones are all right. This COVID situation and lockdowns are asking a lot from all of us. For me, tiny whoops are a great distraction. Building and flying, even if it's just indoors, takes my mind of things. It makes me smile and keeps me entertained. And I sure hope to entertain you guys with this video. This video is the last video in my Insanity 75, the 75 millimeter inverted whoop series. If you're just here to see how to remove motor plugs and direct solder them to your board, there are timestamps in the timeline and description. You can skip this whole section. But if my video helped you or kept you entertained, please like, subscribe or even share this video. That would really help my channel out and I would appreciate it very much. Let's do a quick recap first of how we got to this point. All the videos have a link in the video description. In my first video, I show you my 75 millimeter inverted hoop that flew for five and a half minutes and came in at 22.7 grams. I was blown away with how well it flies and named it appropriately Insanity 75. In the second video, the build video, I've shown you how to build it step by step. You do not have to use the exact same components. It's also a great guide if you want to convert your stock 75 or 70 or 65 millimeter whoop into an inverted 75 millimeter whoop. The frame I am using, the Beta 75 Pro, is not available anymore, which is a pity, because for me it was the best frame for a whoop that size. It's almost indestructible. After months of crashing it, it still hasn't broken. And yes, a Mobula 7 V2 is much lighter, but I usually break those frames within the first two weeks. And now the new Beta FPV 75mm frame is even heavier and just as brittle as the Mobula 7 frame. So I hope Beta FPV will eventually see the light and start making the Beta 75 Pro frames again. I also got a good tip in the comments. If you melt your FC standoffs and put the board in without rubber dampeners and screws, I had one side popping out uh, frequently, you can lock the board in place with some dental floss and it weighs almost nothing, so thanks for the tip, buddy. My third video was all about making it better, comparing motors, props and possibly also making it lighter. That brings us to our last video in this series. I've decided on what motors and props I want to use. I will show you some screenshots of my Betaflight settings and bits at the end of the video. Note, if you watched my build video, it had different motors and props and so it also had different bits than this build. So if you're making this drone with these components, these bits will suit you much better much better. So I can finally shed my last bit of weight. I'm going to cut off the connectors from the motors, remove the plugs from the all-in-one board and direct solder the motors to it. Disclaimer, these boards are very small and have a lot of electrical components that are very close to each other so there's a chance of damaging components. When you solder to these all-in-one boards set your temperature lower if you can and use a very small tip. I use the TS100 with temperatures set to 300 or 310 degrees max and don't rest your iron on the board in and out that's all it should take. Now these are my preferred soldering iron tips. For all my builds from 5 inch to whoops the TS BC2 it's a chisel tip perfect for 5 inch, five inch builds. I even solder the battery leads with this one no problem and my other tip is a TSI. It has a very sharp point and is perfect on all-in-one tiny whoop boards. And as a comparison, both tips and the stock tip that came with the TS100 compared to a toothpick. Are you feeling up for it? Uh, just one more thing. If you take your board out and you direct solder the wires, you have to be able to get the board and the motors back into your frame. And that's hard. Most frames don't have holes big enough to fit the motors through when reassembling your drone. So figure this out before you start soldering and take into account the length of wire you need and keep a bit of slack because when crashing your frame will flex and if your wires are too short you could rip off a pad from your board. So yeah. You're still here. You're brave. Good for you. First I cut the connectors of the motor wires. I cut these as close as possible to the connector. You can always cut off more wire. 
making it longer is a bit more difficult and will add extra weight because the extra solder and you will need to put some heat shrink on so we don't want that next we remove the plastic plugs from the board i use my pointy tweezers to lift them up and they will slide off fairly easy be careful with metal tools you do not want to dig into the board and damage traces now to remove the pins i take my ts100 with a chisel tip put some solder on the tip now touch the pin for a second and it should stick to your tip now gently pull back and voila one pin removed clean your iron put fresh solder on the tip and repeat till you got them all step 3 soldering to the board i first switch to my tsi tip a very small tip is a must have for soldering on such small pads i solder without flux because i had flux residue shorting out the board on a 5 inch so i use solder with a resin core it has flux inside but it evaporates immediately so you have to be quick to get it right i clean my tip put it down to heat up the pad and add solder this should again be done very quickly to prevent the whole board from heating up too much I can't stress this enough. Now we've pre-tinned the pads, we're going to pre-tin the wires. If you don't want the hassle of having to change motor direction afterwards, you can take pictures or note which motor was at which position and notice the order of the cables, how they come out of your motor and how they are going into the plug. And do the same when soldering them. Because the pins go through the board, you can choose whether you want to solder them to the top or the bottom of your board. Now to solder the wires to the pad, I heat up the pad first and then add the wire into it. Again, be fast, in and out. Rinse and repeat for the other wires and we're done. Now we have to check motor direction. How to do that is in my build video. You can find it in the video description or click right here. Let's see how much weight we saved. I know it's a lot of work for a small weight reduction. But remember, every tenth of a gram on a drone, this light counts and it all adds up. This is my final weight. I didn't go for the absolute lightest 75 millimeter whoop. Just switching to the Mobile S7 V2 frame would save me 1.2 gram, which is significant, but I think a frame that lasts me a long time is worth it. I'm also only using two motor screws instead of three. It saves me 0.1 grams. To conclude, I'm very happy with this build and how it flies. The power is great, the agility is even better, and six to seven minutes of fly time, who would say no to that? Have fun building and flying guys. Take care and stay safe.